This meeting is called to order at 7 o'clock. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we're going to begin. Uh, welcome, everybody. We are being broadcast live over Van Buren Television Channel 12. Clerk Wright, would you please call the roll? I'm busy. Uh, Trustee White? Present. Trustee Miller? Here. Trustee Martin? Here. Trustee Frazier? Here. Treasurer Bud? Here. Yeah. Clerk Wright is present. Supervisor? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like to begin by um, uh, passing the uh, microphone to Treasurer Bud regarding our uh, I would like to announce to everybody that last week we got the announcement that Donna Clark had died, 1940 through 2018. It is the dash that is the most important part of an obituary because it denotes the and spans a lifetime. Donna served as Van Buren Township trustee. She was appointed to finish the term of Pat Burbeck in 1981 and she went on to win the 1992 and 96 four-year term elections. She served the community she loved and raised her family with integrity and passion. She was always very grateful and humble to be elected by her peers. She chose to retire after 2000 and travel with her husband, Bob. They liked Arizona, Florida, and the warm states, and she was an avid golfer. She was a Van Buren School District employee at Rossonville School, working as a para-pro for years, helping young people navigate the school year. This board would like to send their condolences and sympathy to her and her family at this time. Can we have a moment of silence, please? Yes. Thank you. I also like to not, uh, let everybody know that we do have an old flag box uh, that's in the uh, police lobby. We put it there a couple of weeks ago and it's already got 86 old flags. We'll properly dispose of them. The VFW also provides this service if you need to do that. And Mazer, uh, our, our newest business in uh, Van Buren, 9-11 uh, is going to also have a uh, job fair and um, we're excited about that and they're hoping you know they're looking for about 100 jobs so uh, give them a call and see if you qualify for any of those jobs and get over there was it 9 a.m. to 4 9 a.m. to 4 9 a.m. to 4 location not sure <laughs> schooner, drive. schooner drive schooner drive okay thank you and the last is um, uh, uh, 9-11, our, our ladder truck will be at Grace Lake, and it'll be hoisting the flag 100 feet high. We've got a large American flag in uh, uh, respect to the 9-11 victims. Moving forward, we're to begin with adoption of the agenda. Um, can I get a motion for the uh, revised adoption of the agenda? I make a motion we adopt the agenda or, um, with the added um, replacing number six with uh, the dam issue. Maintenance to the front yeah. landing dam. Support. Okay, I have motion for uh, approval and support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I usually go through real quickly and tell the public what we're going to be dealing with today. Today we're going to be dealing with U.S. Signal who wants to open up a new data center and the rezoning of that property at Haggerty and Tyler Road. We're uh, closing a loophole, so to speak, in our, our zoning ordinances, which is going to add data centers to, uh, uh, I believe, light industrial uh, zoning areas. We're also going to be looking at purchasing a new fire marshal uh, pickup truck. We're also looking at looking at our uh, consider approval of our existing uh, purchasing policy with some changes and our new and our current credit card policy with some changes. And finally, we're going to be talking about some uh, maintenance that needs to be done at French Lake uh, French Landing Dam. So moving forward. We're at adoption of the consent agenda. Can I get a motion for the adoption of the consent agenda? Trustee sure. Martin. I move we adopt the consent agenda as, as listed in item one, work study session minutes of August 20th, 2018. Number two, closed session minutes of August 20th, 2018. Number three, board meeting minutes of August 21st, 2018. 
Number four, prepaid list of August 23rd, 2018. Number five, prepaid list of August 30th, 2018. Number six, voucher list of September 4th, 2018. Number seven, approval of resolution 2018-19 Michigan Township Association Certificate of Excellence in Taxes. Number eight, approval of the 2019 holiday schedule. Support. Thank you. Okay, I have motion and I have support. Hearing no further comments, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. We move now down to the public hearing, which we have none. The next item is, um, excuse me, that was correspondence. Does anybody else have any uh, announcements, or presentations, announcements? Yeah. I'm sorry, the clerk, right? I'm just going to go over the, what you kind of said about Macy USA. Okay. She received an email from me today, um, and I talked to her during the, uh, the open house, especially uh, Miller and I attended. Mesa USA, they're hosting a job fair on Tuesday, 9-11-18, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and hope to attract in production workers. They are in need of 75 to 80 people to work over four shifts. Their four shifts are a 12-hour shift, but they, they work two days on, two days off, two days on, two days off. Uh, again, it's not Tuesday, September 11th, from the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., that posting is also located on our website. It's on my Facebook page, uh, and I know it's on. It's going to be put on the uh, township uh, town twelve to help promote this. Uh, the address is uh, 6200 Shuna Road, Shuna Drive. Again, it's 6200 Shuna Drive. The entrance is off uh, Michigan Avenue, just before you get the back road going west. Um, I think it's starting wage is eleven dollars an hour. Okay. We also have a fish advisory and I direct your best to explain what's going on with that. Uh, thank you. Uh, I come to the board today to talk a little bit about something that the state is doing to protect the health of our residents and the residents of the region. Um, PFAS, which are parafluorical alkyls and polyfluoral alkyl substances have been found uh, north of Ann Arbor in the Huron River watershed. Uh, the state had already had a ban on eating fish north of Ann Arbor in the, in the Huron River. Um, but as a precaution, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services on Friday issued an expanded do not eat the fish advisory for all fish in the Huron River in Livingston, Oakland, Washtenaw, Wayne, and Macomb counties. The original advisory was issued on August 4th, and this expanded advisory, which was issued on Friday, August 31st, includes Belleville Lake. Um, in recent years, experts have been increasingly concerned about the potential effects of high concentrations on PFAS on human health. Uh, although there is much more to learn about PFAS and human health, the state of Michigan takes this issue very seriously and is one of the first states in the country to establish a national cleanup standard for PFAS in groundwater and drinking water. Let me reassure you, there's no threat to our drinking water at this time and no threat to our groundwater at this time. What the state is concerned about is if you're eating the fish, okay? Touching the fish in the water or swimming in these water bodies, Belleville Lake, is not considered a health concern as these contaminants do not easily move through skin. An occasional swallow of river or lake water is also not considered a health threat. The state says that swimming, boating, and catch and release fishing can still be enjoyed on our beautiful lake and river. They have set up a website for uh, residents to find out more about PFAS at www.michigan.gov backslash PFA response. Um, we found out about the uh, advisory on Friday, August 31st, and the county delivered us five lawn signs to then be placed around the township. We also posted on our website, our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter, thanks to our cable department and the supervisor in the clerk's office uh, helping out. Um, the signs have been placed at the two DNR boat launches, Sandy's Marina, French Landing Dam, and also at Van Buren Park's beach.
I have um, on the website, you can also see the sign, what the sign looks like. There's a fantastic informational piece that's on the, on the website you can download. And also the state's press release, which was sent out on Friday, that explains in a little bit more detail what's going on and what water bodies are affected. Um, at this time, I want to reassure the, uh, the board and our residents that the lake is safe to use. You can continue to boat, you continue to jet ski, continue to hang out with your feet in the water, sipping a nice lemonade, it's not going to hurt you. Just for, for the precaution of keeping you safe, the state is asking not to eat the fish. Okay. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. So how are these contaminants getting into the fish? And how long is this advisory in effect for? Um, those are two very good questions. Um, they're taking, uh, the fish are taking it up through bioaccumulation. It's in their food supply, so they're taking it in. Um, it's in the sediment. Um, but how long is the advisory going to uh, go into effect for? Um, I don't know how long this advisory is going to take. And it may, it may never come off based on the persistency of these chemicals. However, um, the state of Michigan for right now is not said we have a problem in our walk in our lake they're just taking the precaution to make sure that nothing bad happens um they haven't found any here they haven't officially found any here no that's good to know yeah we live in different times with flint and um i can understand the deq's concern especially when they're being threatened with criminal complaints that they're going to side absolutely on the on the side of safety so um, that's where I believe this is coming from okay thank you Lord. any other questions sir? okay um, next is a uh, public comment on uh, fun unfinished or new business nope. okay did you have public comment on, on today's nope okay all right we're moving on unfinished business uh, new business uh, first item is to consider approval of the second final reading of Ordinance 082118. This is the second reading to rezone parcel V12583047990070 otherwise known as 9275 Haggerty Road from C1 General Business to OT Office Technology. Can I get a motion? I make a motion. Uh, actually, All right, uh, Trustee Frazier and Miller. All right, continue. Hello again. Uh, this is the second reading uh, regarding the parcel that is located on the northeast corner of Haggerty and Tyler Roads, right here. Uh, right now, U.S. Signal is looking to, uh, or the property owner is actually looking to rezone the property from commercial to office technology and the office technology uh, zoning would allow a develop a development from u.s signal for a uh, data facility high uh, high-end data facility so um, the rezoning uh, fits with our master plan it fits with our because oh the office technology is right next door it meets the m uh, requirements for the zoning uh, we believe that the office technology zoning would uh, be a great fit at this location. If you have any, and this is the second reading, so uh, this is information that was presented last time. If you have any additional questions, a uh, representative from U.S. Signal is here, and we're very proud to uh, have them coming to our community. They are a fantastic, uh, a fantastic business that wants to be here, and that's who we're looking to gra uh, gravitate towards. Did you have a question? Trustee White? I would like to know the amount of jobs, uh, new jobs that uh, this will bring, and also if they've uh, applied for a tax abatement. Um, I, can, I can answer that. I, the, other than the construction job, I think there's potential for six. Max of five or six. Uh, and tax abatements were a little ways off on if they decide to go come to see us for tax abatements. Uh, they have not asked for them yet, as far as I know, but if they do, you guys will be the first to know. Oh, God, just um, I'd just like to say welcome to U.S. Signal, and I think it'll be a good addition to our portfolio of businesses. It's 
particularly interesting that it's going to be across from Chase uh, Data Center and their facility will be safeguarding is the way I understand it safeguarding uh, businesses and things in the area I think it's centrally located and since that property has been zoned commercial we never got any bites but now getting it rezoned we have an actual um, customer that's going to come in and, and be an asset to our community. And I'm sure that, as I said last time, that uh, they'll put you through the crack the whip for landscaping and making the building look extra nice. We want quality. So I appreciate uh, the opportunity we have to uh, have your business here. Through the chair. Mr. Miller. I, too, want to say welcome. My question is in regards to traffic. I know there's not very many employees coming, but will there be any traffic uh, issues? Has there been a traffic feasibility study for your facility? I um, the traffic usage is so light, uh, there hasn't been need really to do a feasibility study. If that's something that's required, we can of course do that. But uh, it's 24 by 7 data center. So although the compute gear and the servers are always running and operational, the people behind the scenes that that make that operate is a much lighter traffic draw. Um, once it's installed, the hope is it's always on, always operational, always running, and always providing uptime and service to our clientele. So no high volume traffic, no, no, no trucks in and out or anything like no, that? No. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to say it just shows what technology is doing to our society. It's changing it and less jobs, less bodies are needed. When you have, I think it's going to be a hundred uh, thousand square feet building and only six people are in there, all the rest are computers and wires. It's a little bit uh, futuristic. Correct. And the hope is to retain technical talent in Detroit Metro versus it being dispersed other locations in the country. So. And the fact that it's located right on the same road as the community college, I think is good too. Of course. Nice new okay. paved road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I currently have a motion by Trustee Frazier, <coughs> supported by Trustee Miller. Um, this requires a roll call vote. The clerk, right, could you please call the roll? Clerk White, votes yes. Treasurer Bowen? Yes. Trustee Frazier? Yes. Trustee Martin? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee White? Yes. Supervisor? Excuse me, Mayor. yes. Motion passes. Next item. Um, who wants to read this one off? Clerk Wright, you kind of got <coughs> shot off the last one. Could you make the motion on the next item in its entirety? I don't, I don't have to, but. Okay. I know, but I kind of shut you off the last one. <laughs> motion to I, I make the motion to, cons to consider approval of second and final reading of ordinance 808-21-18 parentheses 1 changes to the charter township of Van Buren zoning ordinance 5-2-17 parentheses 2 to add the high tech data processing and community centers to use to M1 light industrial zoning district Thank you. Okay, I've got a motion for approval for clerk from Clerk Wright and support for uh, Treasurer Bud. Director? Uh, today, we have for you the second reading of a zoning ordinance change that's long overdue to add uh, data processing, high tech, uh, and computer centers to the M1 light industrial zoning district. Um, currently, we do it as a uh, in the office technology, but we'd also like to have it as part of our M1. It's an excellent fit for our M1 facility. Um, I'll give you an example of why we believe that M1 is a great fit <coughs> for this. If you look at where the Chase property is uh, right here, it's in the M1 district and it is a data, a data center. Uh, Chase has just submitted, um, they've been, we've been working with Chase, uh, JP Morgan Chase right now for uh, probably about a year on their outside security over, overhaul and their, um, their site plan changes on the outside. Um, but they just came in to us with a um, building permit for just inside renovations, no expansion, no nothing, just inside renovations for their materials for a $23 million project. Mm. So 
the value of what they put into these buildings and the, the high tech, high importance that they have, these projects are very important to our community and they're very low volume of traffic. So balanced in our distribution corner of our township, these are a great fit. Um, they don't add the, the, the traffic or high volume of trucks uh, that we already have planned or in that are in place. So this is a great facility, uh, a great type of facility change to our zoning ordinance. Um, it's our second reading. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Trustee Frazier. I just like to say uh, I compliment and thank the staff for putting this forward and bringing it to our attention to make the change from the M1 light industrial to the tech. Uh, I think it'll be a plus for our township attracting other tech businesses, hopefully, to come to Van Buren Township. Okay. Hearing no further comments, Clerk Wright, could you please call the roll? Yes. Trustee White? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Frazier? Yes. Trustee Martin? Yes. Trustee Bud? Yes. Yes for me? <laughs> Supervisor Magnum? Yes. Good motion passed. Thank you, Board. Thank you. Our next item is to consider approval of the purchase of a 2018 Ford F-150 4x4 Super Crew. It is not a police responder truck. From Atchison Ford for the fire department. The fire marshal's here. Could you please come up and talk to us about it? Oh, excuse me. I do need a motion first. I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay. Supported. Treasurer Bud and supported by Miller. Trustee Miller. Thank you. As discussed earlier, this vehicle is to replace uh, my current vehicle. Get a closer to the mic. Sorry, it's uh, to replace my current vehicle and also meet some of the NFPA standards that I currently do not, as far as keeping equipment separate from the riding area and keeping the contaminated gear separate from the tools used for investigation and so forth. Um, I think one of the bigger things is it, it provides a place of comfort for the uh, community members if their house is on fire. I can separate them from the incident, be able to get them someplace where they can sit, and then if I have to talk to them, it's not in a police car so there's an opportunity that they might be maybe a little bit more open. Um, one thing that was missed earlier today uh, was that it also is uh, capable of towing the fire safety smokehouse that I'm responsible for, which goes to the schools and some public safety <coughs> events and so forth. And what that does is that it leaves the emergency vehicles um, available to uh, pull the dive trailer and some of the other things that they're assigned to do without having to take them out of the fleet to be able to move the trailer around. Okay. Are there any questions? I know we just did. <laughs> we just it's, did. for the public's knowledge, we did just talk this out. And, 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 and I guess uh, originally when we, we saw this, we didn't realize that the fire marshal goes out to every fire. The first thing he does is make sure that the family is, is, gets out of the cold or rain or snow or smoke and gets into his car, a secure environment. He then asks questions about what happens. He then aids them in getting new clothes, getting them a place to live for the, for the night, and getting you know taking care of them. So this isn't something we can stuff a bunch of people into a little truck into. So uh, that's one of the reasons why it's a four door. But um, I think we did to just talk about it, Trustee White. Yes, as I discussed, we discussed and I mentioned during the uh, work study section, uh, we bought a uh, upgraded expensive vehicle last year for the. Uh, uh, For, for the uh, uh, we bought the two economic and a half door. For, for the economic okay. development department uh, this vehicle has basically uh, it's the uh, XL T, T series has a rear window defroster Sirius XM satellite radio a remote start system a reverse sensing system uh, also has the XLT chrome appearance package which has chrome step bars uh, it also has uh, outside white lettering, uh, all-terrain tires on it. Uh, also has a voice-activated navigation. Has uh, chrome-like uh, uh, wheels. Uh, also has a sliding rear window. And I, I think this is just in excess of uh, what is necessary to accomplish the job that the uh, fire inspector wants. And. Uh, I just can't uh, agree with buying a package such as this. And it was stated that uh, there was $36,000 in the budget for next year, but uh, since it's late in the season and this vehicle was available, the, the, it was decided to purchase this vehicle for the state mandated price of uh, $36,000. Uh, 
it's an end of the year the model. The XLT model is the, the uh, base model for Ford. This is a base package. The only thing it has on it is a $500 to $900 uh, add-on package to it, which is an add-on. And of that $900, they've already given us $1,000 in, in cost return. How, however, Supervisor, when you called me and asked me about this, how mm -hmm. I felt about this, you, you told me the only extra that this has is the XM satellite radio. Correct. And, and, and well, I said the navigation with the XM satellite Oh, okay, no, but, but you, you only mentioned Sirius XM satellite radio was the only option it had on it. Then when I received the packet, it had everything that I listed on it. These are all nice on a, on a pickup truck for a Texas rancher. However, for Van Buren Township, we did the same thing last year. We're doing the same thing again this year. And I'm very, very uh, nervous about the situation that we're getting into on purchasing vehicles, uh, premium packages, and with extra dollars. We're not buying premium the package. Chair. Yes, uh, Trustee Martin. As, as explained, and as I understood in work study that Yes, it does have the navigation, which is going to be deactivated. It's not going to be used. Um, these vehicles come with certain packages that most vehicles come with. The, the XM uh, radio, as you know, is a subscription um, entity, yep. and that's not going to be used. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a necessary uh, piece of equipment that we need. To the chair in response, Th this vehicle is an expensive vehicle. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this. It is totally unnecessary for us to spend this amount of money on a vehicle with all this equipment on it when there could be other vehicles which would uh, have a more uh, base package on them. And this is supposed to be a work vehicle. I understand some of the issues it's going to be uh, used for, but I am very, very anxious and nervous about the uh, manner in which the township is proceeding forward in purchasing expensive vehicles. I know, I know it's oft, often mentioned that we want to be a premier township. Well, a premier township means in services to the residents and also in uh, being very strict and, and cautious with how we spend our residents' tax dollars. And, and I'm, I'm going to vote no on this because I think it's very inappropriate for us to spend this amount of money on a service vehicle. Does anybody else have any comments? Um, while I agree in concept with uh, Trustee White, um, you know, I can see it's going to pass anyway, but my plea is to the township is to get a better process in place so that we're not out shopping and buying the high pr uh, all the extras at supposedly a lower price. I just that disturbs me because we did it last year we got a um, extra big uh, cab for the single building inspector who is the only one in the cab usually and I think we're as trustee white says we might be headed down the wrong way but I would like to uh, compliment Atchison Ford for stepping up and giving us the opportunity to get a, a truck that has more um, extras on it, and they stuck with the state a mandated price of thirty-six thousand. So Atchison does show that they're working with the township, and that's appreciated. And I think we should always buy local if we can. It was a question was why didn't we put this out to bid? Well. But uh, keeping our local businesses in business is a big part of doing good in our uh, community, I think. Well, so. uh, in, in, in light of what you just said there, just to make sure everybody understands, we do, have the, we do take only the lowest price. But because the state of Michigan has gone out to Ford and General Motors and asked them what the absolute lowest price they would, uh, they would, they would sell these vehicles to us for, we can go to Atchison and actually look at the F-150 XLT package and say, we will offer you, the state says that this is a $36,000 vehicle and that's what we get it for. So that's why you, know, you don't bid them out because you're already getting below their, their bottom line. Right. But we're yeah. getting an uh, 18 model, not yeah. a 19, that we would have been getting had we have gone along the budget yes. uh, process. Trustee Mark. But it's okay. We'll, we'll do the best Martin and we can. Then you. Mar Martin, so. Okay. Trustee Martin. 
in regards to the, the pickup truck trustee Frazier mentioned uh, last year now we we purchased these vehicles on the understanding that they can be later on used in the fleet for other activities not just for for the ordinance person or whatever to, to say that that truck was strictly bought for that purpose is not is not really uh, accurate we buy these vehicles knowing that they are utilitarian vehicles and they can be used by other departments for their uses which may require them to have two or three people in the vehicle so we're just not spending money willy-nilly. These, these vehicles have a specific purpose and they are multi-purpose vehicles. Um, Wait, well, no, 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 you're, you're, you're like not up. You're not up. <coughs> it's, it goes Miller and then you then then we have to ask if anybody else wants to go first. Go ahead. I agree in theory again with Trustee White on how we purchased these vehicles. Last year was a different scenario. Why I disagreed, it was because a certain woman who would be using this truck didn't need that extended cab, which cost a couple thousand dollars more. This is a different scenario here. You've got the end of the year clearance car, end of the year model. And they give you incentives to push that car out. So you're going to get extra bells and whistles that you wouldn't normally buy yourself, such as the Sirius radio. That's, that comes standard now, six months free, you know, subscription. The remote start is standard. Some of these are extras, but again, it's because they're pushing them out that you're getting the better deal on. Now, if you were to strip it out and get a 2019, the price of the car also goes up. That also has to be taken into consideration. So I'm okay with this purchase for this for this situation. Thank you. Okay, um, so it's, all right, does everybody else want to speak on this? Okay. Hearing none, I have a motion for approval by Treasurer Bud. It's been supported by Trustee Miller. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Opposed? No. Roll call vote, please. Clerk Wright, could you please call roll call? Uh, Trustee White? No. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee Frazier? Yes. Trustee Martin? Yes. Treasurer Bud? Yes. Yes for me? Supervisor? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Next item? The next item is to consider the approval of the 2018-20 purchasing policy. Uh, some slight rewrites on that. And I'm going to ask Treasurer if she would take over the discussion. Um, I think the biggest thing we did was when we looked at this purchase policy is, again, is we pulled the credit card policy and the travel policy away from it so it stood alone. Uh, we cleared up some of the wording. As you can see, it's in red, but it's basically these the uh, same idea of how we purchase and how we follow through. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? We basically just made it more clear that what you have to do to go through this. I make a motion we consider the approval of the 218-20 purchasing policy. Support. Okay, I've got a motion by Trustee Frazier, supported by T Trustee Miller. Do I have any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 No. Opposed? Motion uh, needs to go to roll call. Clerk Wright, yes. Treasurer Bud? Yes. Trustee Frazier? Yes. Trustee Martin? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee White? No. Supervisor? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Okay, and the next item behind here is. Uh, yeah, consider approval of resolution 2018-21, the credit card policy. Sure. Can I get a motion? Trustee Martin? I move we approve resolution 2018-21, credit card policy. Support. Okay. Thank you, clerk. All right. Uh, does anybody have any, uh, trust, excuse me, treasure? No, it's, if we pulled it out, it was pretty much where it was before and uh, as you can see that we've only uh, just changed a couple things uh, before we had the clerk is taking care of the charge cards that was probably a misprint back then when it was created because those are always um, come out of my office if someone needs one uh, our office takes care of that if if someone leaves it's our <coughs> offices that make sure that they're cut off and the only other item that you can see is if uh, someone fails to put in a receipt, they may be responsible to pay it back. Other than that, it's the same as what we've used. Any other questions? Rece uh, through the chair. Receipts will be required from the credit cards, right? No. 
Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. May. May. We, 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 may. Correct. We did use the word may. Um, uh, just because we did want to make it an absolute death knell, but pretty much if you don't have a receipt, you're pretty you're going past, to be responsible. Past practice. Who's your yeah. Past practice always dictated that receipts are, are mandatory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Spelling I out exactly what they're buying, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To the chair. Yes. Uh, as you noticed, I mentioned during work study, failure to turn in a receipt may result in the employee being held responsible for the transaction. Correct. This is not even in effect until we approve it. But however, uh, I misplaced a $4 receipt in the vehicle and I didn't have it, but I, I turned it in. And as a result, that was deleted from uh, my uh, transaction. So this was put into effect, I feel, strictly just to punish me for my reaction on a lot of the, uh, the uh, uh, finance questions that I've asked and brought forth. Mm -hmm. And, and oh, if you're going to do that, it needs to be 100%, not may result, but it will result if an employee does, and that way, you penalize me because I refused to turn, I didn't have a $4 receipt for crossing the bridge to turn in. That, that is wrong. You that think is, that, mighty highly of yourself. That, 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 this was done weeks no. before you ever even went away. Yeah, holy. <laughs> okay, I don't care when this was done. It's when we vote on it and put it in place. And when you say may result in a, an employee being held responsible. It had nothing to do with you. Uh, this okay. is just the way it's supposed right. to be written. But, but it was I'm sorry. It, it was applied in, in my situation. This was applied in my situation. The old yeah. policy was not followed. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I still have the floor. Trustee Mark was next. I still have the floor, okay? And and when you, you, you are generally saying that we're going to pick and choose who we apply this to because it may result in employee being held responsible. So it's going to be up to whoever's responsible, the clerk, the treasurer, or the supervisor, to make the determination. Oh, he's a friend of mine. Okay, forget about it. Or that son of a gun makes uh, comments at every board meeting. And we're... We're not going to approve it, and mm -hmm. that is not the way to run a business. Absolutely who, not. Who made the well, decision? Yes, hold on, stop. It's Martin. No, no. Martin has been quietly waiting, and the clerk right was who next. I don't know who made the decision. Okay, stop, clerk. Uh, 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 Trustee Martin. White, you know I, I praise you for your scrutiny of the of the voucher list, and I have many times you have pointed out errors in our voucher list or have noticed that yes. people have not turned in receipts right. for for repayment. So to say that you are singled out for this, I, I think that's disingenuous and I, I, I take offense to that actually. I'd like to reply to that. This was not <coughs> in effect when, when that policy was turned in. And as, as you, you probably don't know, I wrote across the, the face of my uh, uh, travel expenses in there that I had, uh, I listed the meals that I consumed while I was gone and I says I do not I do not want reimbursement for these meals because I have to eat whether I'm at home or here and I did not accept reimbursement for all those meals and I still have those receipts and I will not use those but however I feel like that someone personally uh, disapproved of this and used it to uh, kind of give me a little smack across the head to show me that they four dollars Four dollars. We don't okay. care about you that much for to well, actually well, pull okay. your stuff out and, and, and try and hurt you for it. It's not doesn't mean anything to us. Well, 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 I, I, I'm sorry. Four dollars doesn't mean yeah, anything to me either, as, as, as you know. However, however, it, it's the principle of the thing. It's the absolute principle, Kevin, and, and, and this is totally wrong when you do something like this. Okay. I and, and I've seen I can't believe you think that we took this personally yes, against you. Yes, you did. You most certainly did. We have to do with that. Yes. We don't care. Oh, oh yes, 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 you do. I'm sorry, clerk, right. Clerk, right. You know, you have people talking over each yeah. other. You no know one's being recognized. Yeah. You're supposed to recognize chair. people. I know. After they say through the chair, you need to recognize them I or else you have chair. this rambling on. So I, okay. I wish you'd gain control of these meetings. Okay. All right, clerk, right. Okay. Do the chair. I'm okay? Okay. Yeah. As Paul know, when he's supervisor, accounts payable that works in my office, I always have. Yeah. And they always have scrutinized anyone that don't have a receipt. I've paid for items that I can't show a receipt for. Directors has paid for items that they haven't 
they can't. They haven't shown the receipt for it. To say that somebody's uh, picking on you, Paul, you should know better. But this is all. This has been past practice. As long as I've been here, it's always been a past practice that if you can't have, don't have a receipt. Wait, reason to say shell because if you can prove that for some reason you wasn't able to receive a receipt or get a receipt for the purchase that you had, if you can prove that, then maybe you don't have to pay for it. But the account payable clerks take care of that. She has been told, not since way before you went on your trip, she's been given the direction if you don't have a receipt, you take it off of the off the off the item. You take it off the reimbursement. That's been past practice for the last nine years, Paul. Through the chair. Oh, one. Are you done? So, as I say, it just happened because of you. It just happened it went somewhere. And I paid, I paid for something that I, I've lost a receipt for. So, as I say, this is retroactive for you because of you. I, I agree with what Trustee Martin said. That's I Trustee petty. Frazier's next. Well, I, first of all, I'd like to know who denied us his fee for getting back over the bridge. Did you have to pay both ways? Yes, okay, I, I okay. paid going up and I had them uh, and one of, uh, coming okay. back there for some so reason. So it only, whoever just arbitrarily said, let's not pay the $4, how do you think he got back over across the bridge? It's only common sense that he would have a receipt for both ways. Through the chair. So I just want to point that out. And okay. I do I believe it could be retribution for Trustee White, who is good at looking at the voucher list. You're smiling, uh, Supervisor McNamara. I believe my memory serves me that we got I into a discussion <laughs> regarding three vouchers that were on a couple of months ago. I believe it was from the Public Safety Department, <coughs> and they couldn't produce the thing, but uh, Treasurer Bud had did it manually or something so they could get reimbursed. So actually, actually, I, I signed his I signed his expenses for full expenses. Where he got cut four dollars, I don't know because it goes well, through the process. Well, somebody must well, have it, decided. It, through the chair. The problem is that you don't know the process, and can't nobody never tell you the process. The, the process. process that I just told you, the account payable goes through the uh, expenses. So, okay, I'm glad that you nobody know. Nobody signs up. Right. Will you be quiet for a minute? you actually Can you answer that? Nice I didn't All see right, that. stop, stop. No, no, no. stop. See, that's stop. the problem right there. Stop. You can't, you got to control. Divide. No, stop. No, she doesn't. He doesn't do it. I don't, He's explaining I don't explain, I don't do that. She does that. We sign off on the purchases. We don't sign off on the expenses. She goes through and she checks and see do you have a receipt. Who's she? She's the accounts, the payable. accounts payable clerk. Carol she, if you don't Trust have Carol? a receipt, she don't pay for it. That's common. Well, why That's did the she practice. pay for the public safeties? There were four items. I'd have to go back in my notes and my uh, things. There were items that didn't have a receipt. I believe Trustee White brought it up at the table. And then Treasurer Bud because came she to went the next and got meeting the, because and she said asked that for it had been inert she asked manually because, by... Because she asked for the receipts and she got them. We, yes, she it, she it, did not there. get the receipts. Yes, yes, she, yes she, did. she did. Yes, she did. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Treasurer, but Treasurer Bud. Been Tre you've, been, you've asked the question. Treasurer Bud's got the answer. It was put on there because it was a charge to Chase. They had the receipts, however, they didn't get to her before she put them in the computer. So she booked them that way. They were corrected. We had every one of those receipts by the time of the voucher list that it was presented to you. However, they had not gotten turned in in time for the, for the bookkeeper to change the records until afterwards. Oh, yeah. But because sure. of being a charge, okay. it had to be paid. Through the chair. Okay, you have not talked, well, yes, Trustee Miller. So, be that as a may, and she seeked out those receipts. Did anyone call or contact Trustee White to see no. what the issue was, mm. in all fairness? No. In all fairness, no. I have no idea about a $4 no. was charged no. until well It doesn't well matter after if it's 4 or 4000 I, I, ha I have the chair, I have the floor, and I'm entitled to an answer. I don't know about those things. Well. You have to be fair consistently. I am so cons maybe. No. Oh. I don't follow. I don't follow your expenses. 
I sign off on them. I make sure that they're, they're reasonable and in line with the, the policy. I send them down to the clerk's office. The clerk processes them through well, his she, process. Well, she asked a question to answer that I don't know neither. If he's saying he didn't get a call, then you didn't get a call. But nobody comes and asks me whether they call the directors. Can I call the directors and ask for a receipt? That's not, that's not how it works. They, yeah. either, they either call or they don't call. If they didn't get a call, if you say you didn't get a call, you didn't get a call. No, absolutely but she not. Didn't, but she didn't come to me and ask me should I call to Trustee White because I don't get into that portion. Uh, I, I through the that. chair. Um, yeah, go ahead. I have little faith in the fact that you or a treasurer bud look at the actual voucher list. I have little faith that you do and scrutinize it. Since we have this had is issues, a point of order because that is slandering issues me. Issues that is a point of order past. right now. Okay, we stop. Had stop. Had okay. In the past. I didn't okay. say anything. Okay, yeah. We had stop. issues in the past. We're way off, off yeah. target here. Okay. Oh well. Okay, you shut down we're, the board, supervisor. When frankly, anybody brings up anything no, I'm that just you haven't getting looked tired at, of you slandering. Okay. And Everybody's no, time out, time out, board. time out. We've got to stop this. And I'm going no, I'm getting time to out. the point that. Then I it, call a recess for a minute because we need to get closure. Actually, we, are, we will go into recess for five minutes. Five minutes good? That's oh, fine. Cool. One minute's okay, good. Okay, we'll go into five minute recess. Right now, we are discussing the uh, new credit card policy, which is pretty much a, just a short rewrite of the old credit card policy. Does anybody have any, any questions regarding the credit card policy itself? Supervisor. Yes. As I stated earlier, the credit card policy says may result in an employee being held responsible for the transaction. Correct. May should be, re, be, be removed from there because somebody's going to have to make a decision is, is this employee held responsible or not held responsible? Okay, there are two sides to that, and I will bring it right forward right now. There was the argument by Treasurer Bud that that word should be shall be responsible uh, for, for the uh, for. The other one, though, was me. I softened it to May, and the reason I softened it to May is because I did not know there's just too many different instances of what could happen uh, to a receipt. And the word shall is immediate binding to a governmental body. The word may at least allows us to say, okay, you lost the receipt, we can't prove that you did it, you were paying for it. But you got robbed and your wallet got stolen, you don't have a receipt. I mean, quite frankly, the word shall means you're still on the hook for it. Shall is a definitive word in government. So I didn't want to use the word shall. The I'm the one to change it. Through the chair. You know, in this day and age, whenever you buy anything, they still have a record of it on their, on their thing. Correct. Or in oftentimes, many places that you go to will offer you the option of having an email receipt as well as a printed receipt. Mm -hmm. So I don't buy the fact that skirting responsibility, <coughs> you know you're using the township credit card if you're using somebody else's money, you should be careful okay. in getting a receipt and holding it. And if you can't turn in the receipt, then go back to where you purchased it and see if they can facilitate um, helping you create something that'll be suitable for the township to accept. Okay, so, we, so the argument, the only argument it is, is the word may versus shall. I'm against shall because it's, 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 it's where it is. I'm for may because it allows us some leeway as, as elected officials. I'm going to call for a straw vote, well, but I'm going I to let other people talk well, first. Thank you. Okay. Now you have, don't you have a motion is, on the table? I do, but I, I can call for a straw vote on whether or not to change it. Okay, my question new, is, if you're going remember. to hold someone accountable yeah, for the right. receipt, shouldn't you put in a time period that they must produce that receipt? <coughs> oh, no. That would be strictly, you can pay I four still have the later. floor receipts. I still have the floor receipts must be obtained for all purchases made using a credit card submitted to the clerk's office. But there's no time frame. If, is it five days, seven days? Probably a week. Probably I mean, there should be a time frame on that or else it, 
you're going to have mi mismatched well, original records one, yeah, on the Yeah, the original thought was to make it five days, but that was thought to be too quick. How about a week? Especially Seven for some days. of these cops, because they immediately go out on the road for, for two weeks. What? Sure. Go ahead. Um, Treasurer, but how are the, the statements reconciled? If they fill out an expense report, and then how, how do you reconcile that with the credit card statement when it comes? Is that something that, is that how it works, or...? Well, when they, when they get the, the Chase bill, which is the credit card, then they take the receipts that have been turned in and match it to that bill. So it comes to the direct, it comes to the card holder and not to the treasurer? No, no. Bill. No, it comes no, to the, the bill. Oh, okay. It, it goes to right to the, to the bookkeeper in the clerk's office. She gets the bill, and when somebody uses it, they're supposed to turn in those cards. And the, receipt, and the receipt right away so that she has them when she reconciles that bill. And ones that aren't are noted in your in your uh, log. So it was, okay. you didn't mean they turn in the card, they no, just no, turn no, in just, the receipt. Just the receipt. Yeah. All right, so the question still again goes down to May versus shall. So I'm going to ask for just a straw poll though. Currently it says May, which provides us some leeway. Shall is imminent and, and etched in rock because we are in government and the word shall is that way. So um, so I guess, uh, how many people want to leave it as May? Because that's what I, yeah, well, I'm the only one that wants to leave it as May. I'm okay with May yeah, yeah. because I think there's different circumstances. I think, I don't, I think it invites I'm just going to say the proper way. And do the chair. Okay. Stuff. I think the proper way of handling this is that you have a motion and a second on the, on the table. We do. You vote you. for it, and if it fails, it fails. If you vote for it, we have okay. okay. to motion. If the motion maker exactly. wants to reestablish the motion, then you should be asking to make the motion. That's maker. correct, but we did allow for the, the straw poll votes in the in the last thing. But let's we're, we're moving forward now. So uh, we have a motion by Clerk Wright and supported no, by. No, it's not me. No, Kevin, Kevin Martin. Martin made Kevin the Martin. Support by me. Okay, He's let's support. Okay. Through the chair. Yes, sir. I'd like to amend my motion. Okay. To. Uh, Exclude the word shall and include the word may. It well, actually currently is that way. It is may. It's may. Yeah. So what, yeah. What are we, what no, they're we arguing that it should be shall. No matter if yeah, if they forget a receipt, then they, they automatically have to pay no matter what. And the motion. I thought it says may or shall. No, no it just question, says may. Through okay, the chair. I'm mm -hmm. My question was an answer. It was an answer. I didn't put a time period down on it because the five because the only time period that was suggested was five days. And I said that's too short. And uh, when they went back to discuss it, they must have ta taken it out. Well, I think we should have something in there. Yeah, I, I agree with Trustee uh, Miller because if we don't, we could be paying for something and then later we find out. How about that 30 days? That's a pretty long period of time. I was going to say a week. Well, well a week's too short because some of these cops right, disappear for, for a week. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, okay. I, I, okay. Is it? I, I, depending on when the charge cash comes in, you might run a little close. If somebody is putting in a, a, a voucher because they it's five days, so I think this ought to hold for five days too. Because if you're making a credit card purchase, when you pick it up, you ought to be able to bring the receipt right into the clerk's office and have it taken care of. So oh, well, uh, that's true. I think it should be five days. So, I go with that. I agree. Split down the middle. I sometimes don't see some of you for five days. Right. Support. And Thank you guys are some of the ones with those, yeah. with those the issues. Uh, I, I was thinking I would say to that, like we got some people that's out th this whole week. Yeah. Suppose someone is making a transaction transaction today and won't be back until next week. Then if he bought something to today, then he should have made sure he got his receipt turned in before they left. What are you talking about if they purchase it some today and they're out of town? And they can't bring the receipt back until they return. That's biggest, true. That's true. Our biggest we're pro our biggest so problems really are cops and cops and firefighters that work weird hours and get thrown on nights and we don't see them and we got to track them down. Two we weeks. do. They should have it by two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. I'm okay two with two weeks because that's give us time. Okay. Your credit card two normally weeks. comes in that's by the end of the month. That's the statement. Two weeks. Two should be in by the statement. All right. Two weeks. Okay. Okay. Make your um, amendment, please. I, yeah. I rescind the amendment. The uh, motion stands as uh, stated earlier. 
Yeah. Yeah. Edward so May. Do you want to change the time period? Which there is no time period. Add a time period. Um, what did we say? Two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks is what they two weeks is sufficient. Okay, I will amend my motion to okay. approve the credit card policy with the addition of uh, a two week period in which to turn the receipt in. We're not done with the motion. Uh, Clerk Wright, do you allow the, you still second? Yes. Okay. Okay, now go ahead. I just want to make sure I understand this. So we're uh, approving the um, credit card policy and we're not changing the word may. Correct. And we're saying that they must produce the receipt within 14 days. Correct. And if they don't produce the receipt within 14 days, then they would pay for it? And so, they would be yep. held they responsible. May, may be responsible. They may, they may be responsible. They may be extending Well, to me, to me, that just opens up. Why even have a policy? I mean, really, it just opens up the floodgates. Well, you know, I don't really have to have it. And if I don't get it there in two weeks, eh, they won't care. I'll wait it out. Through the chair, I disagree with that I, for reasons Thank we've you. discussed. There's certain circumstances where you've got to take into consideration. I'm okay with Trustee Martin's motion, and I I would like to move forward with this. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, I have a motion by Trustee Martin, and it's been supported by Clerk Wright for the uh, for the credit card policy with the amendment to to we uh, produce their. Um, receipts within two weeks. Hearing no for the discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Roll call, please. Okay, Trustee Frazier? No. Trustee Martin? Yes. Trustee Miller? Yes. Trustee White? No. Trustee Bud? Yes. Yes for me, Supervisor? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Okay, next item is the, uh, the approval of, uh, to approve the selection of Blue Ribbon Contracting by Eagle Creek uh, to rebuild the French Landing Dam South Embankment. Can I get a motion? Supervisor. Clerk Wright. Okay. Uh, I make the motion to approve the selection of Blue Ribbon Contracting by Eagle Creek to rebuild the French Landing Dam South Embankment. Support. Okay. Clerk Barton supports. Trustee. Okay. Trustee Martin. Uh, okay, and then Director Best. Yes, thank you. Uh, the township owns French Landing Dam and has a contract with Eagle Creek, who then manages the dam and generates power and takes care of its maintenance, takes care of its reporting, and takes care of uh, the day to day operations. As part of our responsibilities, the township has to pay for certain maintenance responsibilities to keep the physical plant and facility in good working order. This has been historical, uh, historically between us and STS, except last year, Eagle Creek purchased uh, the French Landing Dam's lease from STS Hydro by basically purchasing STS Hydro. And so uh, we are now in a, an agreement with Eagle Creek and they are our dam service operator. Um, historically, when uh, there are maintenance activities that we must do, one of them is as wave action, wind action, and time take its toll on the riprap embankments along the dam, uh, gravity and water and wind, water always wins, creates a loss of riprap, loss of slope, degradation of the roadway. Um, over the last 20 years, we've repaired this riprap area roadway and slope uh, many times with the cooperation of STS Hydro. This is one of those times it's part of our routine maintenance. It's done uh, as it's needed, but it is always uh, on our minds. Um, Eagle Creek has went out for bid and selected Blue Ribbon Contracting uh, to provide the uh, repair of the uh, right or the south embankment for $59,225. Um, if approved, Eagle Creek will be uh, told to proceed with the project. And this is being done um, as part of its routine maintenance, but 
It's also being done because the federal, federal FERC, our Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, who we have a license to generate power, uh, requires us to have a plan in place uh, to make sure that this slope is in good working order. They did an inspection in June or July. One of those two starts with a J, one of the months that starts with a J, not January. But they were here, they saw the dam, they told us we needed to have a plan for its maintenance we, by September 14th. That's why we're here today uh, to approve the contract and get the, moving for, get the plan moving forward. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions the board has. Mr. Miller. I know you're gonna feel like you're repeating yourself yeah, from fine. an hour ago, but can you talk about the maintenance plan the maintenance for plan. the dam? So, so people understand why we're spending this money. So there, uh, while we own the dam, uh, Eagle Creek, our dam operator, is responsible for keeping, uh, keeping up on the maintenance. While they do the engineering, they do the permitting, they do the inspections, they make sure everything is good, they schedule the work, we end up paying for a lot of the physical improvements. Now they do have a maintenance uh, schedule that says you have to check this every six months or check this daily, or, and they do that. Um, FERC actually has asked them and probably will ask them to redo that book in 2019. Uh, but this is part of that maintenance schedule. Um, and in 2017, we were working with STS Hydro to do this exact thing, to do the south embankment. But um, before we finalized the bidding process, the sale went through. And so that this kind of got put on hold until the new owner came into play, and so now we're on the we're on the uh, we're on the hook to get this going and get it started. But it's all part of a, a, a plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chair. Thank you, Chair. Trustee Fraser, then Trustee. Um, there was a part, I, and I can't oh, I can't find it right now, but it said that the fifty nine thousand on their bid that it did not include the, I don't know, the permits. Permits, bonds, and, engineering, yeah. testing, and inspection. Yes. Yes. So does that mean that we're, we will be paying a little more than 59000 or because since they specifically excluded those items, it seems to me that any permits or anything that they'll need, they'll charge us for them. No, what what all what this currently means is that the blue ribbon is responsible for uh, this is their quote, and they're saying this price only includes the fifty nine thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars for the actual physical improvements of the site. It is my understanding that Eagle Creek, as the leaseholder, is responsible for paying for any permits, bonds, engineering, testing, or inspections incurred for this property. Who is responsible? Eagle Creek, the dam operator. Okay. So My they'll be paying. It's your understanding, but I, I just don't want think there will be any additional costs at this. I, I think if there were additional costs, they would have been outlaid to me in the in, in this. Uh, so there's no engineering needed, or because they've done it before, and there's probably a plan already sitting over at their office ready to go because they just bring it back up to what it's designed spec for. So and and we have uh, the money in a fund. As Treasurer Bud stated earlier, that we can use for this. It's and particularly um, for the maintenance of the dam. Yes, and I defer to Treasurer Bud to explain the reserve fund uh, to the. Uh, it's, it's just money that's been put away every day since we've had a rental using the dam for power, and we put $5,000 in with the idea that it would take care of repairs. Okay, thank you very much. Trustee Martin. Thank you, Supervisor. Mr. Best, when was the last time this maintenance was done? Do you, do you know? Uh, I don't think we talked about that earlier. I want to say, I'll, I can get back to you with an exact, exact date, but I want to say it happened last in 2012. Now, in 2012, I know you showed us the slide and you were show, showing the south side of the, the embankment. Now, is the north side pretty much intact because of the way the wind blows or the flow of the, the the north flow of the water, or is it the north side of the dam? The stone might get refreshed as part of this, but as well as because they're going to be out there with the trucks and the stone. Mm. Uh, but 
the slope and the roadway will not are not they don't need to fix those at the time they do need to fix that on the south side but the south side typically the side that gets the most yes wear because the south of the side is and the, the south way side holds back the most water and is the spillway so it has to have the right angle the water so that they it only comes over the top at the certain times everything is engineered perfectly okay thank you yep trustee miller treasurer but you said that we put away five thousand every year can you also talk about how much we have in that account and have we ever come close to depleting uh, those funds has there any been a any damn emergency <laughs> <laughs> no there hasn't been an emergency that we've had to take money out of and the last time we put some money into it we had money in the general fund and we did not take money out of that account and how much is in that account? I, I think it's right around 167000 Thank you. Okay, hearing no further comments, I currently have a motion by Clerk Wright supported by Trustee Martin. Hearing no further comments, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Board. Got one through. Okay, uh, we now move to public comment. Uh, for non-agenda items, does anybody wish to make a comment? In from the public? Sure. Okay. Next item is, uh, did you want to speak? Okay. Oh, Fort I, I do have one question. Sure. Uh, legal question. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, no. No. No attorneys here. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I get an attorney and I say, uh, we, we do some work together. I, there's a positive contact. I may pay you $5 for your services. Make that positive. If ambiguous, does it mean I'm saying I might give you $5 next week or I might give it to you in my dead body? I don't know. I don't either. Okay. Why do you want to have All right. And Good and question. Well, uh, Antonio and I are going to let you sign a contract like that before. Okay. That's one reason. It sounds like we have a contract like that, actually, doesn't it? For, um, Today is too ambiguous. Or, you know, yes, yeah. All right. Um, okay. For, uh, next slide is uh, board comments for non-agenda items. Does anybody want to make a comment, uh, Trustee Fraser? I <clears throat> I just like to say I hope that every uh, parent enjoyed driving their students to school on paved pavement, McBride Road, which. I have to take some credit for since I had to get off the board and we couldn't move forward unless I did so but um, the executive uh, assistant he did went door to door to get everybody on board who are homeowners on that street so his efforts should not be um, go unnoted because it's so much better I mean, I actually had a couple of parents call and say, what the heck? McBride Road's paved, finally. I don't have to get new tires, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would just like to yeah, shout that Beautiful. out. And I'd just like to say, uh, I appreciate the fact that the treasurer's office is going for the MTA uh, Excellence uh, Award that the clerk's office got and um, they've made application for it so that is a, a good thing we'll have two down we're waiting on I your supervisor <laughs> <laughs> okay yes trustee martin just to reiterate trustee fraser said i just happened to have the opportunity to I took the opportunity to drive McBride Road while we had our uh, break in between meetings oh. and they they did a beautiful job on it i commend uh mr best and his department and the uh, the engineers and the company that paved it, it, it is a, they did a beautiful job. It is nice and smooth and neat. All the mailboxes are back in place, and I'm sure all the people that live on that street are, are quite happy. I also, would mind sending a resolution from this board in appreciation if you guys give me permission. Yes. Well, I appreciate you. To Florence. Because without them, we wouldn't have to do what mm -hmm. sending it to. Yeah. To Florence Cement. I don't know about a resolution, but maybe a letter nice of thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Did we do announcements already? I don't, we did and didn't. I don't recall anyone announcing the uh, Van Buren Township 
family safety. fun and public safety day. Oh my lord! I knew that. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll take care of it for you. Thank you, supervisor. So on Saturday, September fifteenth, twenty eighteen, from ten a.m. to two p.m., we will be having the Van Buren Township Public Safety and uh, DDA presents Family Fun and Public Safety Day, which will be held uh, at the Menards uh, store in the parking lot. So there'll be a lot of fun activities for the kids. The, we have our fire equipment there. Hopefully our new canine dog will be there to everyone to see. Don't pet him, but you can watch, you can look at him. And uh, I just think it'll be a fun field day. You know, if anybody that's been to them before, you know there's a lot of activities with kids and uh, balloons and face painting and food, and it's just a, a fun day for all. Trustee Mark, could you repeat those hours? 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah. Okay. Saturday, September 15th. Okay. Thank you for making that safe. Yeah. Supervisor. Since, since we What's are, it, Clerk Wright? Since, we, since everyone is in the thank you mode, I'd like to thank Director Bass, but go further and thank Director Akers for presenting this to the uh, board, school board uh, a couple oh. of years back. I'm not going to say how it got started, but I do know how it got started. I don't think that's necessary. But uh, I don't think so. But uh, I, I, I so. want to thank them for their they effort and how the uh, money got transitioned over to the uh, McBride Road. I'm happy because it is a precinct, and we, our voters will be able to go to that that precinct without having to drive down a, a messed up road. Also, I'll say white and then purple. Trustee White. Uh, as you know, Supervisor, over the past three weeks or so, I've received several complaints about the condition of our cemeteries, specifically Rig Cemetery. Uh, I, I walked that cemetery, took a couple of pictures, and then uh, Trustee Miller contacted me, and she and I walked it again and, and looked at it. Our cemeteries should be one of the top priorities in our community because of the heritage of some of the people that lie at rest in those cemeteries. In the Riggs cemeteries, there's uh, uh, headstones in there that date back to uh, like 1804 or something like that. It, they went way, way back. And we found a condition at cemetery to not be horrific, but it could be improved tremendously by uh, uh, brush cutting and uh, uh, upgrading of the fencing around it and just uh, general conditions. And uh, as you know, I discussed this with you and uh, we should try to put that on the list whereas uh, we can do a better job with our cemeteries. I, I think that that one's probably neglected because it's way down in the corner of the township versus uh, Soup and maybe uh, Denton because uh, they're, you know, they're more available. But uh, I invite you to come out and go with me to the cemetery and you can take a peek at it for yourself. The, the complaint was made that there was poison ivy there. I took pictures of uh, some of the poison ivy. I intend to go back there as soon as I can get down there and, and check out to make sure that it, that is poison ivy in there. And it, it's just, in, in my opinion, cemeteries should not be the top priority, but they should be a priority that maintain the heritage of a premier community. And when, when people go to visit the cemetery and visit or uh, relations or friends, relatives, whatever, they have the right to be able to walk through there and have, be in a nice, peaceful place. Trustee Miller. Two comments I'd like to make. Let's go back to McBride Road. I think it's really silly that we battle over who gets credit for that. We're a board here uh, of seven, and we all had a, a part in that, and that goes way back to when this all first started during our previous term and it wasn't such an easy road on how that got in front of the school board as we all recall so that being said we all played a part and we all supported that road and it, it was unfortunate that you did have to step off the school board for whatever reasons that was that was a choice like one we all respected but that being said 
moving on to the cemetery, yes, I, I did re receive a call from you. We did walk it. That's near my home. It didn't take much to go over there. We looked at it. There was, I didn't think the cemetery was in terrible repair. I didn't think you, you felt that way, but it could be way better. And there shouldn't be branches on, on graves. And I've forwarded those pictures to the supervisor so he, he can take a look at it. And I have talked to the appropriate people, and I'm sure that will be uh, fixed if it hasn't been taken care of already. Now, as far as the poison ivy goes, someone does have to address that because that will spread quickly. So we don't want that for anyone visiting How those graves. Spray it. Spray okay. All right. Hearing no further comments, can I get a motion for adjournment? I make a motion to adjourn. Got a motion by Mr. Fraser, supported by Clerk Wright. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We're adjourned. Thank you very much.